everybody, uh, my name is Kyle and I'm going to teach you how to use the ICP today. Um, so I'm going to switch between this camera and the other camera to show you how it works. And so if you ever find yourself using this machine, you can very easily uh, have a general idea of what to do. Okay, so well, I can't switch between the camera and the most. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll edit this. Oh, well, I'll just show you. Okay, so if you look here, you can see this is the computer. A lot of times you'll find it off like this. All you have to do, see that button down there, right there? You turn that on, and now you have the computer. This will always be on. So in general, if the computer's off, you just press this button down here. Right, uh, right there. Oh, right there, right there. And you press that, and so it, then it, you can actually turn the computer on. It should be on. This machine is the ICP. You move back, you can actually see it. Beyond that tank of argon, that's the ICP. And so, what uh, down here, if you look here, you see that red light that's on. That red light is actually telling you that you are, um, that the machine's running, but the uh, PCI control board is functional. So, the first thing you're going to do whenever you come in to run this machine is turn on the argon. It'll either be a tank here, uh, maroon in color and top. We'll turn that on. It'll, you'll see the gauges go up as so. You're going to want to set it around 80 PSI. 85 PSI is fine too, but 80 is, is where I normally set it. You don't want it any higher than 100 at all, ever. Uh, you don't want it any lower than 25. It won't run if it's lower than 25. So this here is a big liquid tank of Argon. As you'll notice, the liquid part is uh, covered um, with an L because you don't want to attach the gas uh, to look at if you notice that they're not the same size but if you were to be um, to really try you could actually get it to attach and that wouldn't be good because you don't want that um, so yes so this is liquid argon that'll be there too we'll probably move to that once we're done with the gas alright so how do you start it that's the question so we turned on the argon the machine is on everything's running water cooling uh, does not have a light on there's a little light on the water cooler, which is in the back here, that machine right back there, that's the water cooler. If there was a light on the front uh, and it was on, then I would have to uh, put more water in there, it would be low. And you're going to use uh, deionized water only, but there's a DI maker right there on the wall, so we're good. Okay, so let's see how we're going to do when we start this. So we go over to the computer, we see this screen here. A little bit confusing, but basically what we're going to do is we're going to go to levels, okay, and you see that this comes up, and what we're going to do is go to auxiliary gas, press space, go down to medium, press enter, turn it on, nebulizer gas on, PSI is automatic, it'll come in at 22.4, you can set it up to 30, a lot of times I set it to 30 in my methods. Um, and then we turn on the pump and so the pump will pump at 100 rpm to start that's a good place to start and then we press done to keep everything okay so now we've set up all of this this running you can see that we have a nice fair Celtic pump set up we're having good flow in the nebulizer tube and everything looks good remember not to burn the ICP dry you're always going to want to run it with uh, liquid right Okay, all right, so now we can click F1 startup. So if we click F1, it'll come up like this. And what this is saying is it's asking if we really want to continue to proceed with the startup. And we do, so we press F9 to continue. And now it's purging with argon and starting up. You can kind of watch it. Well, I guess I could just talk. Or we could just wait. We have to wait 90 seconds um, for it to start up. It's kind of weird, you know, talking to my cell phone like this. It's a strange thing to do, you know. Like four people have walked by and been like, what's that guy doing? FaceTiming, you know, maybe? I don't know, maybe. But, anyway, so common errors that can happen at this step are your gas isn't on or you don't have enough gas, and then it says Archon's too low, and they'll say it over on the computer there or you'll have um, no flow uh, in the water, so it won't start. Uh, so a couple things to check always before you start things is that A, your board's getting power, and B, 
um, is the lid closed? Because you're always going to want to have this lid completely closed. You're never going to want to open it actually, because um, there's no reason to. And if you did, an invisible light gun in there would burn out a lot of the uh, detectors. So. so, yeah. So, still purging, still waiting. We can talk about our lives, you know. Just wait. I don't know, a few things. So, it's pretty cold in here right now. If it ever gets really warm, we're going to want to turn the machine off. Uh, just because we don't want it to overheat. So, you know, it's trying to give you the, the rundown of everything, you know, so you can do it yourself. Alright, so we heard a click and then we hear a pop. And you can see it right there. The, uh, the flame has turned on, and it, normally it won't turn on the first time, but I ran this before today, so that's how we do it. Okay, so now we're going to go in and we're going to profile. What profiling does is it takes a snapshot at the arsenic line, or at any line you tell it to, but it's preset for arsenic. And the reason why it's preset for arsenic, uh, it's impossible to, I have to hold this the whole time. Um, the reason why it's preset for arsenic is because arsenic is right at the center of, this is a weird angle for me, the, the right at the center of these, um, of the detectors, right? So right now I'm just going to put it in 5 ppm arsenic. We're going to start, we're going to start by, so you actually have to go in manually and start the pump sometimes because it doesn't always like to start when you first start the machine. So now it's pumping. We're getting good nebulizer work. Now, I'm gonna take some 5 ppm arsenic solution. We're, we have, I've set up um, a flush time of 10 seconds. So, there it is. I went to, here, to show you how to do it, you go back to the entrance screen by pressing escape, then you go to profile, which is right below plasma control panel, which is what we were in before, then we go to automatic, F3, F1, uh, put in 10, and then F1 run. And now we're running with a flush time of 10 seconds. And so what this is doing is it's taking the arsenic sample, and it's, it's taking the arsenic sensor in here, the sensor that's at the correct angle to note arsenic in the solution, and it is um, measuring the amount of incident light into that, that angle. So it's pretty cool. It'll take about 20, 30 seconds to run the sample, and uh, then we can see what the peak looks like. All right, here's the peak. That's an arsenic peak right there. So if you want to, what you're going to want to do is write down the intensity in the logbook. 238.867 238.867 and the profile at which arsenic is occurring so we're starting at 543 but we're gonna go somewhere else so so all right and it is 1413 and it is about what oh close up on my face there getting too personal it's about 2 p.m. So I'm, I'm right now I'm writing in the logbook all of this information uh, for future reference. It's good to track how, what your profile and what your intensity is to see if there are any changes in the system. Um, and so what I'm going to do now is calculate the spectrum shifter or calculate SS. So if you see there it says F1 calculate SS. I'm going to press that. The current veneer position is 543. I press enter. It wants me to put the new veneer position at 618, so I will do so. Alright, done keep. Now we're going to go to automatic, we're going to run it again. Just to be sure that there's nothing kind of impacting how things are, are going. Um, I, I'm always tempted to look around the image on the phone, I guess it's a... That we do anyway. So now we're we're uh, I've reset the spectrum shifter, so we know that that's in the right location. And I'm rerunning it, and it looks like we're good. Let's see, calculate the spectrum shifter. 
Okay, I want you to bring it back to 597, and that's actually more reasonable. Okay, and done keep. And we look pretty good today. Good. Okay, so now we're going to run an actual arsenic sample. How do we do that? We go into methods, we go to arsenic, and so now this is, so I went into, so I went over here into development, and then I went to methods, see that? See methods, and then uh, arsenic came up, but you could do anyone, so to look at all of them, you go to F6 list, you can list all of them, but I want arsenic, so I'm going to choose arsenic, okay? I'm going to check out the uh, general output. Okay. So I just checked over everything in there. I didn't make any changes, but I want you to be able to do it. So there are methods in there. For example, water check or water qual is one that I made that has all of the common uh, metals and things that are needed for water quality analyses. So if it's in there, you can probably find it with that method I made for you guys. Um, just look up water in the method screen like I showed you. Uh, and you'll be able to do that. So if you do get confused, there's a manual in here. My number's also in the logbook, so you can access um, you can access me that way. So in general, when you start, you have to standardize these. So you're going to have to do different um, concentrations of arsenic, right? Um, almost ran out there. Um, it's always good to have lots of stock solutions, right? Um, so you can use them. Alright, so I think that will conclude right now the end of things because I'm, right now I'm going through and I'm running each, each standard and so once I'm done running each standard, so this is coming up as 0.59, that's in intensity units, right? Um, but after I'm done running each standard, I'm going to take all of that, I'll plot it out, I'll print out a graph, it looks like this. Uh, this one isn't as good because, uh, as you can see, two of the points, the ones in the, in the front there, right up there, uh, I didn't actually put those in, so. But if you look at the ones that are off the line, you can see they'd be in a straight line, and they would be because um, because the, it's a linear uh, fit, right? And because I'm increasing concentration by a known amount, and so uh, so that's how you make your standard curve, and then it refers to that standard curve, right? So you can print all that data out. You can have it right now. Saving doesn't work. I'm hoping to get it working uh, before I graduate. Uh, if I do, then you'll be able to save there. There is a floppy drive and a on the machine, a floppy drive for your, your laptop that's by USB, and floppies available in here. So, hope that works, um, and I hope this helps. So give me a call if you need me. I'm Kyle Monahan, 518-466-5070, or uh, feel free to email me, or I, I could still be here when you, when you watch this, so if I am, you know, then you should just contact me, and I'll come down, and I will... I will talk just like this, and I'll be like, hey, I can help you. Or maybe I, maybe I can't help you, but it's better to call than not to call. Anyway, I will stop blabbing on. I hope this helped. Uh, and this is, oh, this is again a, um, a tutorial for the Thermel Gerald Ash Trace Analyzer. I think it's a 61E. Let's see. 61E, yeah, I was right, the ICAP 61E. Yep, so that's the model. I'll put this on YouTube. Everyone to look at, and I hope this helps. Thanks again. Talk to you later, guys. Bye.